Well, hello, folks. Today we're going to look briefly into the Hegelian dialectic, and this will help us to see a lot of the deceptions we see around this time, and and basically the outline of how some of these things work. And I'm confident that this will really help you to avoid deception in the truth movement specifically, and in the culture at large. Now, some of you may have heard of the Hegelian dialectic before. The philosophy was penned by George Hegel. And he lived during the 17 to the 1800s. The Hegelian dialect is made up of three points: the thesis, the antithesis, and the synthesis. So the thesis is the starting point. Then you have the antithesis, which is the opposite of the thesis, working through to the synthesis. Where they are both merged together in a so-called higher truth, two opposing things become merged as one, and Hegel set about on a path of thinking about the world and its history through this lens. And I'm sure he would have been absolutely shocked to see how this has been working out in our society today. I mean, for example, you have. The thesis as male, and the antithesis as the opposite, which is female. In our in the narrative we see today in our society, we are seeing that this synthesis is being created against these two opposites. The synthesis that they are becoming merged into one, and this is something we saw with pop artists like Prince and Marilyn Manson. You've got that artwork of Marilyn Manson where he is embodying that merger in himself, and even his name, his stage name, Marilyn Manson. You've got the female Marilyn Monroe, and you've got the male Charles Manson. That is the synthesis in the Hegelian dialect, where he has merged together two opposites, and so you see more and more in society. Division and stoking the polarization between the sexes, between male and female, and so then you come to this concept of well, we need to reach a higher alternative or a greater balance in which we merge together two opposites. But you also see this in the truth movement, in the direction that the secular truth community is moving towards. Now, I'm not saying that everything in the truth movement is wrong. There is obviously truth in it, but what we're talking about here today is the danger of the deception of where, as a whole, it is leading. So let's add this to the outline of the Hegelian dialectic, so you can see where the truth movement might be going in terms of this. So you've got the initial problem, the thesis. You've got the rich elitists, who are involved in satanic rituals, and who are controlling this world. Now, that again, there may be some truth in that, which we've seen over the past few years, that there there are evil powers in high places, there are rich elitists involved in certain agendas and, and everything. Okay, but let's look at how this can lead to deception in the truth movement. So, we've got this problem. Of the rich elite, then we have an antithesis to that, the opposite to that, which is a reactionary movement, a revolutionary movement that is rising up.、Uh, this is full of controlled opposition. They're after some kind of humanistic revolution in which they can take over the world and set up a new world of their own,、uh, and and basically oppose and get rid of the rich elite. That as this stuff is exposed online about the rich elite, the problem, then there's going to be a reaction in society. There's going to be people who want to rise up. There's going to be anger. There's going to be frustration. There's going to be a antithesis. So they obviously realise that, and I would propose have installed people who can lead the opposition. So where does the synthesis come in? 
an antichrist figure rises up who claims to be the solution to all these problems. We see in the Bible that he will come with lying signs and wonders. He will come with great power and deception and he'll be very alluring in, and speak in dark sentences and riddles, as it says in the book of Daniel. Someone with the gift of the gab who rises up and says, well, this is the solution to all of these problems. This is the solution that everyone, whether rich or poor, free or bond, will receive this mark, the mark of the beast. So he says, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're a rich elitist or you're one of the poorer folk who are angry and fed up with being ruled by this corruption, this, this figure comes along, this antichrist figure, who brings this false solution, this false peace, a humanistic utopia, if you will, a new Babel, a new Babylon, and rules over this beast confederation. This figure with all these false promises and false peace comes and he is the synthesis. Because remember, the truth movement says the occult Luciferian symbolism and new age stuff, that isn't the problem. The problem is, is that these rich elitists and these world controllers have misused that occult information to harness power for themselves. So what we need is a humanistic revolution where people, the people of the world, unite together and take back that symbolism, that so-called truth that the rich elitists have misused. And so you can see how the synthesis can come about from that dichotomy. The idea of controlled opposition is nothing new. Lenin even talked about a false opposition or controlling the opposition, leading it ourselves. So it's nothing new. And someone can still be controlled opposition, whether they are selected for that role or they're simply being used by the enemy in a spiritual way. Like the Bible says that even Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light, as do his deceitful workers. Uh, but you look at some of the main truthers, so-called truthers out there today, these famous people that are leading uh, big parts of the truth movement, who I would call controlled opposition, in one sense or another. You've got people like Russell Brand, who has had a history of being into Hinduism, into New Age practices. But you look at even this picture of him that was sent in. It's, you see the book on his bookshelf, The Secret Doctrine of All Ages. A Manly P. Hall book, who, if you know who Manly P. Hall is, the secret teachings of all ages and all of that. He is a big figure in Masonic thought. So you can see what, you know, why has he got books like that on his bookshelf? Why is he calling for some kind of global system? Because this is about that humanistic utopia. And it is just the right hand side of the dialect. It's just the antithesis to the, the original thesis that will lead to the synthesis. It will just lead to this Antichrist ruler rising up and offering these things will, that will sound so good to so many people. You've got Joe Rogan, a massive, massive figure in the truth movement today. Um, and he has Gnostic views. He is pictured with Anton LaVey's son. You've got David Icke which really just goes without saying, but he says some accurate things from time to time, of course, which draws you in. But he is teaching Gnosticism. He is a theo he's teaching theosophy, the theosophical views, which, are, which come from Alice A. Bailey and Helena Blavatsky, massively involved in the Antichrist agenda, in this kind of making the world one against Christ, like the Tower of Babel. You've got Jordan Maxwell, which goes without saying. With all these figures, you've got to remember what Jesus said. He said, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me 
scattereth abroad. And that is the baseline of the point that is being made here. If they're not gathering for Christ, if they are against Christ in their philosophies, if they are teaching people error and heresy against Christ, they are not gathering with Christ. They are scattering abroad. And unfortunately, if they're not with Jesus Christ, then they are against him. They are anti-Christ. Remember that the Bible says that he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he basically he that denieth that Jesus is the Son of God, or that he came in the flesh, all these things are anti-Christ. They are against him, and Gnosticism, which actually underpins most of these truthers, Gnosticism in itself was one of the main enemies against the gospel of Jesus Christ in the first century. Uh, the, a lot of the New Testament is written against Gnostics and Gnosticism. So that is what links all of this together. Those who are true Christians know that Jesus Christ is the only one who will come back and destroy the Antichrist with the breath of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. Jesus Christ is the only one that's going to bring true and final justice and rule with a rod of iron and bring justice and peace to this world when he returns and judge the living and the dead. It's only Jesus that's going to do that. You get these secular truthers that basically think all of the evil in this world is as a result of these few elitists in power. You know, remember, God sets up rulers in this world. He establishes rule, and, and the Bible says that their hearts are in his hand. He turns them whichever way he wishes. So the idea of rulership and leadership is not evil in itself. But they actually think that these rulers are responsible for every evil in this world. And in so doing, they project their own heart. They project their own mistakes, their own personal sin, their own responsibility for repentance and faith. They, they project it all onto these group of elite and they don't think they have to face up to uh, the, the evil that they've done, how they've broke God's law and how they've rebelled against him. And the, that's very, very serious because as we know, the gospel requires that someone recognizes and that they are a sinner and they confess their sins and ask the Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness from that sin that they have committed through his death, burial and resurrection on their behalf. So they will not be looking for the grace of God. They will but not be looking for the mercy of God to forgive them and to grant them eternal life. They will not be looking for that because all they're thinking about is the evil that exists in high places and they have no understanding that their own heart is wicked and they need redemption from their sins. And so this is one of the biggest dangers of the truth movement we see and we should turn away from deception before it lures us in to some very dangerous error. God bless you. <laughs>